everyone. Tonight, let's go over some chassis tuning and chassis sensors and kind of uh, give you a rundown on what they all do, uh, what I feel is kind of the order of importance to have and not to have. Um, and I'll kind of show you how to set them all up. So when we talk about chassis tuning, what I mean by chassis tuning is, you know, traction, getting down the racetrack, uh, shocks, uh, front end, front struts, ride height. Is it in a wheelie? Is it, what is it doing? Right? So I made one of these videos about uh, turbo sensor selection and it seemed to be rather helpful. So I figured uh, everybody's getting faster and maybe people should get uh, on board with a little bit more in-depth chassis understanding and, and how to utilize Holly EFI and how it can help you uh, go faster, more consistently. So uh, this car's got like, this is my personal car. This has got like every sensor out there. Um, a lot of them, you know, you wind up doing and you're like, well, oh, it was pointless, whatever. Uh, but I do it because I want to learn and I want to be able to teach you guys. So um, we'll just go down this little list here. We've got drive shaft speed. That's a, that's a pretty important one. That's a good one. I want to keep that one. Um, we got VPS. Uh, we're gonna, we'll get into VPS. I've made other videos on VPS, but we'll, we'll get into that. That's, it's Y axis. It's side to side G. Uh, we've got our four, sh four corner shocks. Um, we've got brake PSI, we've got track temp. Um, let's see page two, we've got front wheel speed. That's a good one. Um, and then, uh, we got the rest of our VPS stuff here, X axis, which is really important. Uh, then we have front ride height. So let's look at a log and start digging into what these are and what's, what's useful uh, for some may not be useful for others. What's useful for others may not be useful for some. So this is a data log. Uh, if you just watched the video that I just uploaded, you know, an hour ago, um, this is the same log. I got the same log open because we monitor all the same stuff. So this is a drag race pass, um, you know, right there. It's the end of the run. Um, so, the, the big one that I, uh, that I think a lot of people miss, and that's really important in my opinion, is uh, the G meter, X axis G. So I use a VPS. I've made other videos on the VPS. This isn't a sales pitch to try to sell you a VPS, but um, the G meter is extremely important, right? It is telling you how fast you are accelerating forward. So you tune via the G meter. Uh, well, at least once you start tuning these things and getting really fast with them, uh, you will start tuning with the G meter. So the VPS is nice because it not only does it give you uh, X axis G, but it also gives you pitch. So this is the angle of the car. If you want to learn more about the VPS, uh, go into my channel. You'll see plenty of videos about the VPS and everything they can do. This one's a pretty high up on my list as a G meter. If you can't afford to do a VPS, and let's just go look. What do we got here? Oh, look at that. There's my website, acrinnovations.com slash parts slash sensors. Let's go to G meters. Uh, VPS, a base VPS is 899 bucks. And uh, there's the Holly uh, two axis G meter and it is $358. So um, there's a couple other options for G meters out there. Uh, I've used these two a lot. I've also used and sold plenty of the Rife G meters, which by the way, Laura, if you see this, you need to add the Rife G meter to this. Um, so um, the... The, they both work great. This is only going to give you X and Y axis, which X is forward acceleration. Y is side to side. Uh, this will give you X, Y, and Z, as well as roll pitch and yaw. Um, pitch is wheelie. Roll is if the car is rolled over one side or the other. And yaw is if it drives uh, doesn't drive in a straight line, which is pretty important. So, okay, we've covered the, uh, the G meter. That is kind of a... Number one, this is the, the one of the first things you want to put in a car if you're going to be drag racing this thing. Um, but before a G-meter, you should also have a drive shaft speed sensor. So uh, you can learn a lot from a drive shaft speed sensor. Um, and it's a fantastic tuning tool. Uh, it also is what you're going to need to use if you get into traction control. So um, drive shaft speed, most of you guys already have it. If you don't, cruise on over to our website and... There's drive shaft RPM. Uh, eventually, there we go. So um, we've got a 32 tooth ring and the drive shaft speed sensor from Davis. So this is what we always recommend. This is what we use. Um, if you're in the market for a drive shaft speed sensor, I highly recommend using this setup. Um, 
it will catch a problem well faster than others on the market. Okay. Now, what else we got here? Let's look at, this is a big one. A lot of people ask about shock travel. Okay. So here's, we're going to just look at the left rear and the right rear. And you can ask yourself if you think you should have them on all four corners or not. Now, these overlay on top of each other pretty dang perfect, right? I mean, they do a really good job. But if you start to really dig into it, there's a little bit of a variance here between the two. And that's because the car is rolling a little bit. So let's just tighten this window up to uh, six inches. And six inches. And now you can see kind of small deviations, right? Um, nothing major, nothing crazy, but there's still small, some small deviations, right? This is a uh, both rear end, uh, 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 shock travel sensors. Now this, if you're gonna, if you're, if you're on a budget, which a lot of us are, um, I highly recommend when it comes to shock travel sensors to start with one in the rear and one in the front. Okay. You don't have to put all four corners on right away. It doesn't, it, it, four corners is not very uh, common amongst um, the majority of cars, especially the, a lot of the cars that we work on. Um, there's, you know, a lot of people go into the under, under the impression that like, hey, the rear end's got any roll bar. It shouldn't move, blah, blah, blah. You're right. Can I free up an output or an input? For sure. But uh, we've got them back there, and uh, I like to use I like to use both of them. It's not that I look at one more than the other. Or if I rely upon one more than the other, they're the exact same brand. These are both um, uh, Rife uh, uh, shock travel sensors in the back here. So um, now let's look at a front shock. So right here's a front. So a front shock on a radial tire car, uh, and and even in the no prep stuff, um, is pretty dang important. Now understand that. This car moved more than 0.8 inches. We started at 3.1 and we topped out here at 3.9. Um, the spot where this shock travel sensor is mounted is actually a two to one ratio. So what that means is if this shows one inch of movement, you know, from 3.1 to 3.9, so 0.8 inches of movement, the, uh, the wheel actually moved uh, 1.6 inches. So um, I could shove a math channel one in there so that, but point to it i just know that it's two to one it is what it is my limiters that are on the front end of the car are also set up two to one so it works out really well in my situation because it's just easy for me to know that like hey if i want to pull a quarter inch out of this i do a quarter inch out of the shock travel so i've gone over shocks um and we have gone over the g meter and we've gone over um the uh the drive shaft speed let's look at uh two that a lot of people don't well one is certainly that a lot of people don't think of as a chassis tuning tool but let's compare these two right here front ride height so this is a laser okay this laser is from uh mad racing uh parts uh glenn Payne. uh nice piece works great um uh, he makes a a good one um the uh race pack one uh which is a rebranded banner works great um and i've used um uh, uh, Loop Research. They're another brand that, that I've used, and the, they've they've all done very similar jobs. When you get on a really shiny surface, though, um, a laser can be a little sporadic, and this was a really shiny surface that we were on. So let's look at something here. Let's look at front wheel speed. Now look at this. Front wheel speed is a really good chassis tuning tool. Whenever I do front wheel speed on a car, I always put it on the passenger front. The reason being is that the engine will torque up, pick up the left front always before the right front, always. So if the left front's off the ground, I don't really care. If the right front's off the ground, you can't steer. So I always put it on the left front or on the right front. Um, so let's, let's look at this. This is, um, if you look, there's, there's a tiny little dip there and that's right where the, the tire came off the ground. Let me zoom in a little bit. There you go. You see that dip? Right there, there's the deviation. Right there's that little dip. And that's because it stopped, or the, the front tire stopped accelerating because it was off the ground. So let's look at something that would show you a tire coming off the ground a lot. So let's go show a comparison. Here we go. All right. Now, look at front ride height. So 
front ride height from the comparison. The comparison is the dotted line right here. Oh, whoops. Uh, the comparison is this dotted line that's going on right here. This one, not, not this one. So, front wheel speed, we have a little dip here. See how it goes flat, right? So 34 mile an hour. Let's just back up a little bit. Okay. So 34 mile an hour, it hits, and the right front tire comes off the ground. Now, notice ride height doesn't really tell you that, right? It doesn't really tell you that. Um, we're at 5.7 inches. Um, if we come out here, you know, it bounces back down. It's kind of hard to decipher exactly where it comes off the ground, but it seems like it's repetitively coming off somewhere in the neighborhood of 5.7 inches, right? But it's a little bit late. And the front ride height sensor is on the left front of the car where the uh, front wheel speed sensor is on the uh, right front of the car. So chassis twists a little bit, but that one right there will tell you that the front wheel is off the ground. Okay. So um, that's a really useful tool. It's also extremely useful to use this for front versus rear wheel speed traction control. If you want to use that now, uh, let's pull front ride height off and let's look at VPS pitch. So this, this line here is our, our dotted line is our, um, is our car to, that passed where it wanted the wheelie a lot, right? So you can see it kind of correlates. It's up in the air, pitch is up 1.5 degrees. It comes back to the ground, pitch is down 1.08 degrees, right? I use pitch for wheelie control. And this was an example of me getting way too aggressive with wheelie control. Way, way, way too aggressive. Uh, it was still fast enough to win, but it was way too aggressive with wheelie control. What it was doing is it was porpoising, right? So it was picking up the front end, setting it back down, picking it up, setting it back down. And I'll show you right here. Front wheel speed. This is RPM. Let's add wheelie control to it. Boom. So wheelie control. Let's change that color just because it's confusing here. Oh, that's nice. There we go. There we go. Okay. So. Um, wheel control hit real early in the run. It hit right here. And then look, this is where the front wheel comes off the ground and wheelie control grabs it, pulls 13 degrees out of it. Um, puts the timing back in it. Again, this was my screw up. I got too tight with my wheelie control strategy. Um, well, I've since fixed that. And I've also since fixed the reason why the car wheelied. Uh, but that's for a different video. So we'll have to be up underneath the car and kind of show you that one. So you see, Every time the front wheel comes off the ground, it's yanking timing out of it. It's doing it based off of pitch. So um, I guess if I were to say that my hierarchy of what's important to me for tuning a car, uh, tuning chassis-wise um, uh, with uh, chassis sensors, right? Like what sensors that you would want um, first. Uh, number one it, to me is going to be drive shaft speed right here. Uh, number two is definitely going to be, and let's just close this comparison. There we go. Make it a little easier to follow. Okay. Um, so drive shaft speed is going to be number one. Number two is going to be a, a G meter of some sort, right? Whether it be the VPS, which is what I'll always default to and what I'll always recommend, uh, just because it gives you so much more data like pitch and roll and yaw and uh, X axis and Y axis and all that stuff. Um, so VPS is what I'm going to always default to, but if you don't want to buy a VPS and you buy a G meter, G meter is number two on my list. That's, that's a must have, right? Uh, number three on my list is going to be one rear shock sensor and one front shock sensor. I personally want the rear shock sensor first. If it's a radial tire car, if it's a slick tire car, I want a front shock travel sensor. Um, so, just take that for what it's worth. Uh, so I want at least one, uh, one and one, you know what I mean? Uh, a, a, a rear shock and a front shock. So that's going to be my next like go-to thing that I want. Um, and then after that, I want front wheel speed. Uh, that one, that one tells you a lot and it's, um, uh, and it's, it's not an expensive add on. Um, like I, I run TBM brakes and TBM makes like a bolt on setup, uh, works really, really well easy to configure, um, strange, just, uh, I actually helped develop the strange setup. Um, and, but they're a little bit of a pain to get your hands on apparently. Uh, but 
Uh, if you have TBMs, it's cheap and easy to add it on. Uh, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks. Uh, if you have strange, I think it's the same deal, a couple hundred bucks, uh, to add front wheel speed. Well worth it. In my opinion, uh, you can also do a lot of stuff. Like in the last video I made, I, I, I set up a, uh, a boost offset and I said, Hey, I don't want this thing to do anything until front wheel speed is over 120 mile an hour. Right. So it's not going to allow it to do anything until we get to here, which is in my opinion, another variable to turn things on and off. Um, I set my fan to turn off. Um, above 50 mile an hour wheel speed, front wheel speed. And the reason being is that the frontal area of my car, we've got enough air going through the radiator to um, overcome the use of the fan at like 50 or 60 mile an hour. So once we get over 50, I shut the fan off. Um, I do that with a lot of cars. It gets driven on the street a lot. So front wheel speed is a really, a really useful one. After front wheel speed, um, if you've got all of, if you've got a, shock sensor or your shock sensors, you got a VPS, you've got a front wheel speed. Um, the next thing you can look at is ride height, um, full transparency here. I don't typically look at ride height often, uh, except for when I have like something weird going on. It's a really good tool to look back at, uh, because it's looking at the left side of the car, uh, left side of the front end of the car. So, um, those are your basic, uh, your, your basic chassis tools. Uh, chassis sensors to be used as tools. And uh, let's bring one more in here. Um, get rid of this and find uh, rack tent. This is if you just don't really care about money. And whoops, here we go. And um, you want to know how hot something got, right? So um, there we are. We're on the starting line. It's 85 degrees. Teams are going to run 85 degrees the whole run. So, there you go. Um, there, that's like if a you know you just want it. It's also useful. You can take that same track temp sensor and shoot it at the tire, and now you have tire temp. So, uh, another useful tool if you just you know want to uh, go down that rabbit hole, uh, you certainly can. So, hopefully this helps some of y'all uh, make a decision. I know all this stuff is expensive. It's not, it's not cheap. So choose wisely. Again, my order drive shaft speed. Number one, um, number two is a G meter of some sort. VPS is always my move, but again, you know, any type of G meter, um, number three, a rear shock travel sensor. Number four, a front shock travel sensor. And, uh, number five, I want front wheel speed. And then uh, number six, uh, we go into front ride height, laser. And then number seven, track or tire temp. So, all right. Hopefully this helps some of y'all. I get a lot of questions about, um, you know, what should I buy? What should I do? Which I, you know, do I need this? Do I need that? Hopefully this answers some of it. Chassis tuning is really easy when you have all this data in front of you. I shouldn't say it's really easy. It's not really easy. Uh, you can make really good informed decisions if you're educated well enough on the information that's put in front of you uh, to make the car go down the racetrack repeatedly. So, um, you know, choose wisely and uh, let us know if we can help in any way, shape, or form. Uh, my website's acrinnovations.com. Hit us up if you need anything, if you want to buy any of this type of stuff. Um, and if you've got any good video ideas, uh, spit them out. Let me know. I'll try to cover what we can. See ya.